instead of sending me an email because that tells me how much more that artist want the place. It's just like looking for a job. If you're always sending mass email to people to whom it may concern, I'm a very amazing artist from here, having 10,000 awards, but I don't know your name, please, you may can look at my portfolio and offer me an interview and I'll be very appreciated. And then and then and there you can you can't open the file, then that's the end of it. So Yes, please go to see galleries. But if you if you if you want really want that gallery badly, please just go to the gallery. We are always around in art fairs. Some artists will drop their card in the art fair, grab us, and you know some people grab your hand and just talk to you. That's a great. That's great because. And then I will cross off and let me get back to you. And if I say let me get back to you, I'll get back to you. I think that's that's amazing. Yeah. But if you want to uh, reach, or oh, I'm not interested in Hong Kong, I want to have an English gallery um, promote me, then it's difficult to, to fly over. Then just try to find the gallery owner's name or the director's name and just address the person and just be as courteous as you can and make it efficient for everyone. Because I'm very strong, so uh, I think today is a good chance to learn the practical way. And uh, it's surprised to, to know that you, you welcome artists to come to you instead of sending you email. Because I think most of us that I know from the Art Gallery Association, um, most of the artists that we work with are very passionate and they yes, most, I would say 99% of my artists are very confident people. You know, if you're not confident about yourself, then it's very difficult for people to be confident about you. So, you know, it's they're confident, they just charge in, some people just walk in and talk to you first, and then I will submit you a CV. It's fine, anyway it's fine, because we don't have a set view, but I, I think gallery owners are chill people, like if otherwise they won't be gallery owners, so you just have to be approachable. Okay, thanks so much. My last word, <laughs> please uh, make use of the resources available in Hong Kong. As I said, there are over 2,000 shows in Hong Kong per year. And uh, please make your time and not just see things on, online, but actually come out to see the shows. Um, all the galleries uh, in Hong Kong offer shows that are free, and including the biggest names. Uh, we, I don't think any galleries in Hong Kong charge anything. I just came back from Beijing, and four of the five galleries I visited, I had to pay. So, um, I mean, Hong Kong is great, and we have great, uh, great curation here. Please come out more. That's all. Thank you so much. And I will just um, um, could invite someone special guest. We have a VIP today in the room. I just want to share with Harita's talk today because uh, that's a very good insight in that. But I want to, want to share some experience with uh, all the attendants here. Is that uh, the question? Points you mentioned in your talk actually is uh, deep thinking because every point is interlinked with another. Yeah, that's a very complicated matter. For example, in terms of display, curating is very important, but I do not expect every artist is a professional curator. He, an artist, is an artist, he does us. But it depends on other people and all of his own thinking to think about the things. For example, how to curate your work, how to marketing your work, how to write a proposal. That's our professional training course that I used and forwarded to the artists in Hong Kong previously, uh, teaching them how to cultivate their own artistic career. For example, if you are uh, exhibiting your work at a booth of three meters in an affair, you have to think carefully what kind of where you want to put that up. Two men in ten, if you ten, put ten paintings, you charge 30,000 per one. Then the uh, visitors may not be interested in that because they are more or less similar. But if you are just putting three of them on the both, then you can charge 30,000 per one. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's some of the points. And also for the pricing itself, I think for the budget,
think artists, uh, it is not necessarily to price the web too high at the first place because you have to look over the whole market and analyze it. Yeah, and there are also many opportunities in the community. And for some of our audience who raised the question about installation or things like that, yes, it's quite difficult to get the patronage for that because I won't collect a uh, digital world. The computer will be out of date next year and the world and the world will already be appear again. So uh, that's a very important thing to think about also and also for installation, yes, it is too big to it's difficult to be collectible. But think of other channels. If you present your work really well, there are other chances of getting commissioning, other chances of putting it on the commercial places. I just know a fresh uh, candidate from the Baptist University who has been awarded in an Anas and Lakes. It's just a very unique, I think unique is still also one of the important, important words to think about. That makes the attract the people. That artists who transfer the traditional Chinese who and white design into installations, paintings, etc., etc. And that's a very make the great appeal. And then she got very successful in the market. As Gary represent them, as a land cover commissioning her to do the work. I think all these questions you have to link together and think about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and uh, I hope you look at this topic um, as uh, pricing as a market, market with some optimism. I think it's all about how to learn the knowledge to reflect the value and make a living at the competitive world. So thank you very much. So uh, please stay in touch with us uh, by joining us membership and stay at our Facebook and look at our website. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.